Hey, today we're talking about in-camera transitions. I'm gonna give you a quick run through some of my favorite camera transitions and how to get them. The base of these transitions is how you open and close the clips. You're finding for a great way to stitch these clips together. Which means you need to be intentional about how you're shooting and don't hold back. Just a piece of advice, it's very unlikely that you're gonna get a perfect shot on your first try, so give yourself a fighting chance and do multiple takes. Some of these transitions might include a little bit of editing, but they'll always turn out better if you know exactly what you're doing while you're shooting. Let's start with the most basic one, which is a panning or tilting transition, which means once you're done with a clip, give your camera a quick pan or tilt. Now the important thing is that in the following clip needs to start with a similar pan or tilt. So if your previous shot ended with you panning to the right, now you have to pan right into your clip. That'll give you the best results. It'll give you enough motion blur between two clips that the transition will come out seamless. A little editing pro tip on this transition would be to just do a cross fade between these two clips just so that you really lose that point of cut on the motion blur. Now this is a zoom transition and this can be done in many ways. I'll share with you how I go about it. So the way this transition works is either by pushing yourself forward or using the zoom in the lens to do the pushing. If you're using the lens, make sure you zoom in quickly. What we're looking for here is that moment of motion blur so we can find our cut. And you guessed it, the following shot should start with the same movement that you did in the shot before. If you did a zoom in with the lens, make sure you do the same movement, or if you did a push in in person, make sure you do that similar movement. This transition works really well if you're going from a wide to a closer shot. Making sure the transition follows the movement or the action of the story will help amplify what you're trying to tell. Now moving to transitions that take a little more post-production. These still have the elements of in-camera transitions, but the stitching really comes together in the edit. Start with the masking transition. For this, you need to end your clip on passing through something. This also works really well if something's opening or closing, or anything that wipes the image clean. When you bring this to the edit, it's very straightforward. You just need to create a mask that will follow the subject that's wiping across the image. The great thing about this technique is that you don't need to add anything to the following image. Which means that if you have a shot that you want to make it a little more interesting, you just need that first shot and you can cut into the second. And the last one is one of my favorite transitions. I really enjoy using film burns and glitches and all those things fit in really well with my style. Grab your phone and film through the eyepiece of the camera. That way you get this odd perspective between clips. You bring that into the edit and find a couple of frames that will fit well in that's your transition. Any of these transitions can be done and can be adapted. It's up to you on what direction you take them. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Bye.